Needless to say, Disney's had a rough go of it here lately. Um, when it comes to movies, the last eight releases, maybe nine releases, have not made any money. Well, I shouldn't say that because Guardians of the Galaxy 3 was pretty decent. It's probably going to be uh, a decent little um, haul for Disney when it comes to one of their properties. But when you go back and look at the Eternals, Strange World, and Man of the Wasp, Quantumania. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Thor, Love, and Thunder. Um, we just found out that Doctor Strange, Mom, they underreported their budget by $100 million on that movie. Then you fast forward to Elemental, and now Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny have all been, for lack of a better term, bombs, with Guardians being the only title really to do anything at the box office. We can't include Avatar 2 because that was in development released prior to, I should say in development, prior to Disney taking over that property. So not only do you have that, but you have the fact that this past July 4th was the absolute worst July 4th attendance in their parks in a decade. We're talking wait times for most rides, 20 minutes or less. There might have been a couple outliers that were a little bit longer. But the wait times were down, which means the parks weren't as full as they normally would be on a July 4th holiday. Um, you've got issues with Disney Plus, losing millions and millions of dollars, losing millions and millions of subscribers. And they just purged a bunch of content off of Disney Plus. And it's no longer going to see the light of day. Well, now... You have this article that I found from InsideTheMagic.com. Disney handed crushing defeat, hemorrhaging fans. After months of losses in movie theaters and a continually escalating war with Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, the Walt Disney Company has just suffered a huge defeat at the hands of one of its biggest multimedia rivals. Now, keep in mind, even with all the losses at the box office, Disney is still leading in revenue versus the other studios. When Disney Plus streaming service launched to much fanfare in 2019, it was an immediate, enormous success. Fans have been impatiently waiting for the iconic company to join the streaming service market and bring its deep catalog of classic animation, Marvel Studios, Disney, Star Wars, Pixar movies and shorts, and National Geographic. Now it seems that the bloom is off the rose and people are disenchanted with Disney+. Plus. People are disenchanted with Disney, period. They're finding out that Disney isn't all that it's cracked up to be anymore. So, HBO Max which is Warner Brothers Discovery, which now it's just Max. I hate that name. They should have never changed the name, the branding. While Disney Plus streaming service has been one of the dominant forces in the market since it landed, it was just bumped down in subscriber numbers by one of its biggest rivals, Max. The Warner Brothers Discovery-owned streaming service formerly known as HBO Max has overtaken Disney Plus per 9 to 5 Mac, in market share, knocking it down to fourth, the fourth most popular slot among major platforms. Even more worryingly for the House of Mouse and its proprietary streaming service, not only did Warner Brothers Max actually gain market share in order to leap up in the ranks and overtake them, but Disney Plus also simultaneously lost market share, basically got beat in both directions on this one. And that goes to subscriber count. 
That's what that is. That's subscriber count. And when you're bleeding subs and not putting out content that will attract more subs, this is what you get. Even as Disney Plus is overtaken by Warner Brothers Max, which had its own issues in the transition from Max to HBO Max, I know I myself on my Apple TVs, I had to download a new app, which to me, I made absolutely no sense to have to download a new app. Um, I'm not sure how it worked on either the Fire Stick or an Android device or even a uh, Chromecast. The rest of the streaming service market is in turmoil. For years, Netflix has dominated the rest, particularly as it pioneered producing original content like Stranger Things, Marvel's Daredevil, and Squid Game. But the same report, using data from Just Watch, reveals that Netflix has fallen to Amazon Prime Video, which is now the leader in market share at a dominant 21%. In contrast, Warner Brothers Max currently holds 15%, and Disney is at 13 followed by Hulu, part of Disney, Paramount Plus, Apple TV, and the other smaller streaming services. Now, I will say this, Amazon Prime has put out a couple decent shows. I mean, Terminalist is good. Breacher's good. Um... In the middle of the last season of Jack Ryan, it's pretty good. But it's also landed a couple of stinkers. Citadel. Nobody's watched Citadel. And they're already doing a spinoff for it. Uh, dare I say Rings of Power. Which is probably the most expensive flop for a series in history. So... I can see where Amazon has taken some market share from net from Netflix. Netflix has, you know, they've they've gone pretty woke, except for maybe uh, Dave Chappelle, um, Extraction, Extraction Two, Stranger Things. I haven't watched. I still haven't watched season four of that. I need to watch season four. Um, but you get the gist. In many ways. Every major streaming service is struggling with the same issue. There's a finite number of people who will subscribe to a platform and they are all competing for them. For years, Disney Plus has succeeded on the strength of its Disney content, which has built in loyalty and emotional impact for millions. And has been boosted by original content from Marvel Studios, Disney Marvel, like WandaVision and Loki, and Disney Star Wars which The Mandalorian has become a shell of itself, pun intended. Did, how many people watch season three? I watched the first episode. I couldn't watch any more past that. However, the more recent Disney Plus original series have encountered dwindling audiences, with the currently airing Secret Invasion doing dismal numbers. Hey everybody, Nick Fury's black. Just so you know. And strong fan criticism of the more recent seasons of flagships like The Mandalorian. Season 3. In short, it seems that Disney's original content game has been slipping. Well, for you fans of Lucasfilm, Kathleen Kennedy. For you fans of Marvel, Kevin Feige. Just saying. On the other hand, Warner Brothers Discovery just did suffer the single worst superhero movie box office flop ever with The Flash. That's why you don't put two Ezra Millers in the movie. And the controversies over the changeover from HBO Max to Play Max don't seem to be quieting down. So why did it actually rise in the list? In short, while Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zaslav is taking extreme backlash for deleting HBO Max series and movies, their merger of the streaming services did bring over an enormous amount of content like Deadliest Catch, Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives, and Dr. Pimple Popper. 
I didn't know that was popular. From Discovery Plus. I, myself, Deadliest Catch. Okay. Dinner, Drive-Ins, and Dives. Okay. I am a Street Outlaws fan. I like to watch Street Outlaws on occasion. Haven't watched it much here lately, though. Um, basically porting over the audience base and inflating its share, at least for now. Although basically every Disney release in the last year has been a disaster. It seems that it still remains the most profitable media, media company out there, outstripping Warner Brothers Discovery, Sony Pictures, and Universal Pictures on the whole. This latest Disney Plus setback is pretty bad for the company, but it isn't going to kill it. At least for now. Well, I can I can tell you my opinion. My opinion that Disney is dying a slow death. The only way that I can see to turn the ship around at Disney is Kathleen Kennedy, bye bye, Kevin Feige, bye bye, Bob Iger, bye bye, and start getting people in there that are not trying to insert woke ideology and political agenda into their content and start putting out content that is entertaining like it was back in the day. So comment down below, share your opinion, tell me what you think. And while you're at it, please smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell to get notified when my content becomes available here on YouTube. You can also catch me on Rumble and Odyssey. And as always, I thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in, and I will see you later.